Hello and welcome to Service News. In this edition, we'll be looking at two additions to the Rover 800 range. Selector cable adjustment on automatic gearboxes for the Rover 800, how to cure clutch slip on mini and metro automatic gearboxes, Rover 200 steering and suspension adjustments, and a new warranty claim system to save both time and money. Plus, later in the programme, details of a service news competition with first prize of a VHS video player. But first, we're off to Southampton, where Service News was at Viking Garages in West End to witness a presentation linked to the Customer Satisfaction Award Scheme. An inscribed cup was presented to Neil Evans, Vikings Managing Director, by Tony Fletcher, Field Service Manager in Western Region. Acknowledgement of the garage's excellent service, both to their customers and to Austin Rover. So, how does Viking maintain its record of outstanding service to customers? Um, if I were to give a word to it, I think that it would be caring, and I think caring with integrity um, are the um, keynotes to any success that we might have. Uh, the team atmosphere which I endeavour in this small family concern to uh, achieve is um, undoubtedly successful. Um, I hold no secrets from my staff. Um, they work as a team and we all have a common aim to make the company successful, to be proud of the products that we have to sell and the standards that we constantly aim to achieve. Congratulations to Viking and to all who sail with her. As you know, correct tensioning of engine timing belts is very important, particularly on engines with high compression ratios and high valve lift. Austin Rover has developed a new timing belt tension gauge which ensures accurate readings on the M16 and MDI engines, both of which are fitted with wider timing belts than those used on previous models. Never attempt to tension the timing belt on these new generation engines with the old gauge calibrated in Burroughs units. Remember that before tensioning a timing belt, you must equalize the belt tension as described in the repair manual. You will have already received the new belt tension gauge, part number KM4088AR. Always refer exactly to the instructions given and check the correct belt tension figures in the relevant repair manual. The slightest inaccuracy in selector cable adjustment on any automatic gearbox can have disastrous consequences. For this reason, a checking gauge has been developed for Rover Sterling and 825i models. The gauge, available shortly as tool number 18G1555, enables tests to be carried out with the center console in situ. First, select neutral and remove the handle. Slide the gauge over the lever, then center punch the lever as near to its center line as possible. Align the center line of the gauge exactly with the punch mark on the lever and secure it in place. Apply both the foot and hand brakes, then start the engine. Push the gear shift slowly towards reverse until you feel the first point of engagement. The punch mark on the lever should be within the reverse tolerance band on the gauge. Now pull the gear lever slowly towards drive and check that the first point of engagement takes place within its tolerance band. If either setting is outside the tolerance band, the selector cable needs adjusting. Adjustment is straightforward, but the procedure must be followed to the letter. Remove the center console and slacken the cable lock nut using a crow's foot socket. Make sure the cable slides freely in the olive. Engage second gear and push the cable outer fully forwards whilst holding the lever in position. Then tighten the lock nut to 18 newton meters. Select neutral and slacken the lock nut, again making sure the cable slides freely in the olive. This will allow the selector valve to centralize about the neutral detent. Retighten the lock nut to 18 newton meters. 
Now, carry out a hydraulic engagement check to make sure the adjustment is correct. Center punch the lever in the middle, just above the quadrant. Then make two marks on the quadrant itself, one either side of the lever, to these precise measurements. Apply both the foot and handbrakes and start the engine. Move the selector lever forwards until you feel the first point of engagement. The punch mark on the lever should align exactly with the mark on the quadrant. Then move the selector rearwards. Engagement should take place when the center punch mark on the lever is aligned with the other mark. If either point of engagement is wrong, the cable must be readjusted. When the console is refitted, carry out a hydraulic engagement check using the gauge as before. All relevant information, together with torque settings and dimensions, are laid down in Rover 800 News, issue number 17. Recent investigations on EFI models have indicated that, under certain operating conditions, a build-up of deposits can progressively restrict the fuel injectors from delivering the correct amount of fuel. Typical symptoms of restricted injectors are misfiring under load and the inability to achieve correct exhaust CO readings. Austin Rover is currently evaluating the possibility of cleaning the injectors and if you encounter these problems, contact Workshop Development for further advice. Superior sound insulation on Austin Rover cars means quieter motoring for all customers. In isolated cases on Rover 200 models, creaks or rattles may become apparent. Before attempting rectification work, always ask the customer about the noise and when it occurs. Then carry out preliminary checks on all front suspension and steering gear, particularly the steering column universal joints, to eliminate any obvious causes. Research completed by a service at Cowley has isolated the main areas for inspection. A low pitch rattle on partial steering lock can usually be eliminated by fine adjustment of the steering rack damper. To confirm this, turn the steering wheel vigorously and listen for a more prominent rattle. Adjustment can be carried out with the steering rack in situ. With the vehicle on a ramp, loosen the right hand rack mounting bolts to get to the adjuster. Use special tool 18G1553 to loosen the locking ring. Set the torque wrench to 2.6 Newton meters and with tool 18G1553 stroke one, torque the adjuster. Then back it off half a flat. Retighten the locking ring and secure the rack mounting. Finally, check the steering on both locks for stiffness. A suspension creak can be caused by the torsion bar torque tube touching the floor panel. To fix this, dress the floor panel away from the torque tube. After carrying out this operation, remember to make sure that the under seal and protective wax in the area is made good. Austin Rover now has an additional communication system for warranty claim submission. Delsar, dealer electronic link with service at Austin Rover, is designed to benefit those dealers whose business justifies a computer, anything from a PC to a mainframe. Delsar complements the view data system, already in use in many dealerships, which remains a very effective way of submission for dealers who do not have a computer for use in their service department. Processing all warranty claims through Delsar and view data means fast and easy administration of all warranty procedures. Once claims have been entered onto the computer, the entire list can be transmitted to service in one short phone call. There's no wasted time in posting or data preparation. Parts listing, status reports and rejection slips are returned within four to nine working days. To introduce Delsar, a series of regional roadshows was organized demonstrating the system's advantages. Several systems are already in operation 
or in the process of being installed. We'll keep you posted with the progress of Delsar, including the experience of users in future editions of Service News. Well, now some advice to retail and main dealers on controlled material returns. When returning warranty material to your corporate parts wholesaler, it's important to obtain a signature of receipt confirming that all parts have been received undamaged within 28 days of the warranty return label being issued. Now, if you're then debited because the part arrives at Coventry damaged or outside the time limit, your corporate parts wholesaler must prove that he correctly dispatched the material to Coventry. Otherwise, he must reimburse you. Two new models in the Rover 800 range were unveiled at the 1986 Motor Show. The 820E and 820SE are powered by the 2-litre M16 engine and incorporate a completely new engine management system known as Single Point Injection. This is a combined ignition and injection system which injects fuel into the throttle body using a single injector only. There are two adjustments you may need to carry out at the 1,000 mile after sales service, the idle CO content and the base idle speed. These adjustments have to be made electronically using the fast check units and cannot be made manually. First, the CO content. Run the engine until it reaches normal operating temperature and check the CO content. The correct reading is between 2 and 3%. If this is wrong, switch the engine off and connect the single point injection fast check serial tester via the diagnostic connector. Start the engine and follow the fast check diagnostic trail. Any sensor faults indicated by the fast check must be rectified before setting the CO content. If the reading on the CO meter is too high, press the negative button on the fast check. If it's too low, press the positive button. When the CO reading is correct, allow the engine idle speed to stabilize for 10 seconds, then press the set CO button. The CO set LED on the fast check will then illuminate. If a fault code is displayed, consult the fast check instructions. The second adjustment you'll need to carry out on the fuel injection system is the base idle setting. And only then if a related component has been changed. First, it's important that you run through the test sequence we've just covered. Then disconnect the stepper motor harness and connect the stepper motor fast check SMD4057 using the adapter harness. Connect a tachometer and start the engine. Operate the fast check to close the throttle disc, then turn the adjusting screw on the stepper motor to obtain a base idle of 600 to 650 RPM. A Service Insight video program covering the single point injection system in more detail will be available soon. At a recent meeting chaired by UK Customer Service Director Roy Davis, Austin Rover's paint suppliers unanimously approved spray booths and 60 degree oven facilities for applying and drying automotive paints. This recommendation reiterates the message conveyed in the last edition of Service News. So all paint manufacturers agree, for the best paint finish, use a spray booth and a 60 degree oven. This will give your customers the finest paint facility in your area. Statistics show that the rate of car theft falls from 1 in 50 to 1 in 2,500 when the vehicle registration number is engraved on all windows. A car thief knows how easy it is to get new number plates for a stolen car. But if he's faced with the prospect of replacing an entire set of windows, he'll think again. It takes only a few minutes to provide that extra security for new and used cars. Identicar will supply the equipment at a nominal fee and training free of charge. You provide the labour and make the profit. Your customers will be happy to pay less than £20 for that extra peace of mind and that includes a free hire car for up to seven days in the event of a theft. And remember, Identicar is the only system approved by Austin Rover. So ring them direct on 09276 4747. 
The subject of transmission slip on mini and metro automatic gearboxes was covered in technical bulletin item 672. Before attempting diagnosis or rectification work, gearbox pressures must be tested in all selector positions. Carry out pressure tests at both idle speed and at 1000 RPM with the engine at normal operating temperature. Then proceed with stall tests and record the results. Clutch slip or flare between third and fourth gear is usually due to a pressure loss or restriction in the feed between the governor housing and the top and reverse clutch piston. If a pressure loss is evident, check the reverse output gear seals. These can be damaged by sharp edges in the top and reverse clutch drum bore. Remember to remove any burrs using fine wet and dry paper and clean out before reassembly. Replace the reverse output gear seals with the new harder wearing type. The part number for those remains the same, but they're easily identified by the white mark. Fit an additional O-ring, part number DAM8236, in the spline relief groove to further reduce the risk of pressure loss in this area. After fitting and lubricating the seals, wait 20 minutes before fitting the top and reverse clutch to enable the seals to recover their shape. A bad joint along the reverse output gear bush can create a V-channel and cause pressure loss. If the four feed holes in the bush are misaligned with those in the output gear, this can cause a restricted feed. If you come across either of these faults, renew the gear train. Pressure loss can also result if the reverse shut-off piston seals are worn. Increased support for the small outer O-ring seal was introduced in 1984. Check the VIN number to see whether a modified piston is needed. When refitting the piston, don't forget the internal O-ring. From November 1983, a new forward output shaft was introduced on Metro Automatic. In isolated cases, the modified feed hole can cause a restriction. The usual cure is to fit a new shaft. Finally, check the top and reverse clutch feed pipe. If this is damaged or doesn't seat properly in the governor housing, a pressure loss will occur. One important point on these gearboxes. When removing the valve chest, make sure that the forward clutch flap valve doesn't fall into the transmission case. Failure to fit this will cause harsh engagement of the forward drive. When replacing the valve block top cover, you must position the governor valve correctly. The dowel in the top cover not only helps to locate the cover, but also controls the travel of the valve. So whenever you're faced with mini or metro automatic gearbox problems, remember to follow these procedures and refer to the repair manual for the precise figures. To coincide with the launch of the Maestro diesel van, a new service inside training video has been produced. Diesel introduction explains the operation of the diesel engine and its basic servicing requirements. A second program on diesel will deal specifically with the Austin Rover MDI diesel engine its maintenance procedures and fault diagnosis. If you're not already enrolled on the Service Insight video scheme, you're missing out on a whole range of subjects. So get in touch with Correspondence Course Administration at Cowley and keep up to date with all video training programmes. Well now, what you've all been waiting for, yes, the Service News Competition. Use your product knowledge and delve into previous and future editions of Service News to win some fabulous prizes. The winner will receive a VHS video player complete with remote control, 14-day programmer and five blank cassettes. Then for ten runners-up, a choice between ladies' or gents' watches or a digital clock radio to help you get up on cold, wintry mornings. But we're not giving anything away this time. Look out for the clues and questions in Service News 4, and you might be one of the lucky prize winners. Well, that's it from me. I'll see you again in the next edition of Service News. <laughs>